Hey everybody, RPG here. Today I'm going to show you guys how we can actually use an arcade cabinet to play some of our favorite N64 games. So I have a Raspberry Pi 4 powered arcade cabinet right behind me running RetroPie and I'm going to show you how we can go into the game settings and alter the controls to play with the onboard controls on the actual arcade cabinet itself. So this is a really cool way to actually go into these classic games and really kind of adjust the experience and just add a little twist to it. So it's really fun. I had a blast diving into Mario Kart 64. I'm going to show you guys exactly what you need to do in order to get this up and running on your arcade cabinet at home. All right, so once again, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 powered arcade cabinet right here running RetroPie. So first thing we need to do is we need to go into our N64 collection, which is right here. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to jump into my favorite game for N64, which is Mario Kart 64. So what we need to do now is we need to let the game actually load in. So it's going to take a couple seconds. It doesn't have to load all the way in just until you get to that first Nintendo screen. So that should be coming up any second here. There it is. So now what we need to do is we need to jump into RetroArch. So to jump into RetroArch, what we need to do is we need to hit our hotkey enable button along with X. So you're going to have to remember which of your arcade buttons you program to your X button and then you need to hit your hotkey enable button, which is typically going to be your coin button or your select button. Mine's located on the side of my arcade cabinet over here. So I'm going to hit that with my X button at the same time. That's going to bring me to my quick menu within RetroArch. Now what we need to do is we need to hit our back button. So you have to remember which you've actually programmed as your back button or your B button. So I'm going to hit that and we're going to go to the second column here. Right now we're in the first column. We need to go to the second column, which is settings. So we just move over with our joystick and now we can go down to where it says input and we're going to select that with our A button. Once we're in input, we're going to go down almost all the way to the bottom to where it says port one binds. So once we're in port one binds, we're going to hit our A button and this is where you can find your different mappings and it'll list each of the different functions within the game. So you can see here I have my A button, my B button, uh, start, my D-pad, all that stuff, which are all functions within the N64 games. So obviously we have a completely different setup here with a six button configuration and a joystick. We also have start and then we have select on the side. Your arcade cabinet may have a different configuration of buttons, but it's not gonna make a difference. As long as you have at least four buttons, you're gonna be able to play the majority of the N64 games. The more buttons you have, the more options you're gonna have, but at least four is gonna get you through the majority of the games. It's gonna certainly get you through Mario Kart 64. So as you scroll down here, you're gonna look for functions that haven't been mapped yet. So you're gonna take a look here. Your shoulder buttons, we don't have to worry about so much for this game, but for the Z trigger, yours is probably going to be blank. Mine's already filled in because I've already done this, but when you get to your Z trigger, you wanna find a button on here that you want to map as your Z trigger. So the way that we do this is we select this option with our A button. You're gonna to come to this screen here and you need to hit the button you want to assign this function to. So you only get about three or four seconds to do it. So I let it time out that time, but I'm gonna do this again. So again, what we wanna do is we wanna highlight Z trigger and we wanna select it with A and then we're going to hit the button we want to assign that function to. So I chose this top right button up here as the Z trigger button. So you'll see when I start playing the game in a few seconds here, that's going to be what I hit to use my power-ups that I get in Mario Kart 64. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go down to where it says control stick here, which is a couple options down, and we need to assign those to our joystick because right now they're going to be blank. Again, mine are populated in because I've already done this, but they're going to be blank by default. So let's go to that first option here which says control stick X. Now you don't have to worry so much about the titles of these, just look at the diagrams next to them. So the top option here is going to be control stick X and it's gonna to go towards the right. So that means that we're gonna assign our analog direction to the right. So we'll select this with our A button and we're gonna go analog right. Next one down is going to be control stick X again but the direction is going to the left. So this is gonna be our left. So we'll select it with A and we'll push our joystick to the left. So next thing we have to do is we need to go up and down. So this doesn't really make a difference for the game because we only go left or right when steering in this game, but it's a good idea to fill these in anyways in case you go into another game that does utilize these. So 
Now it's gonna be control stick Y and the direction is going down. So we're gonna select this one and we're gonna pull our joystick down. Next thing we're gonna do is go down to the next option, which is control stick Y again, and this direction is going up. So we're gonna select it with A, we're gonna push our joystick up. So if we take a look now at those four options for the joystick controls, it should read plus zero, minus zero, plus one, minus one. So this is, again, a great way to be able to tell that you did it correctly is just make sure that it says plus zero, minus zero, plus one, minus one. That's going to be the correct mapping for your joystick. So that is all we need to do here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll back up with our joystick all the way up to where it says save auto config. Once we have that highlighted, we're gonna just tap our A button. You're gonna get a little confirmation in the bottom left corner here, just saying that you've saved all of your settings here. And now we can actually go back into the game. So in order to go back into the game, we're gonna do the same thing we did to get here in the first place, hotkey enable and our X button. Just tap both of them together, brings you right back into the game. So let's hit our start button and test out a game of Mario Kart 64 with the settings that we just programmed here. We'll do a 100cc race. Might as well be Mario. We'll go with the Mushroom Cup as our track. And here we go, let's give this a test. So I'm gonna hit this button right here, which is my accelerator, and let's check out the joystick. So left steers left, right steers right, so we're good there. Let's grab, oh, I missed the power up there, so let's grab the next power up, which should be around the next corner or so. I think it's through the tunnel. Uh, then we get another power up, and we're gonna test the button that we assigned to the Z trigger which would be the function of utilizing those power-ups that we collect throughout the race. So I'm gonna pick up this one right here. We'll let it choose which one we actually get. And now let's hit that Z trigger button and see if it works correctly. So it does. We're able to knock these guys out. And you can see that we're in second place. So everything's working perfectly. And if we hit some of the other buttons on here, which were already programmed in, we're able to hop. So we pretty much have all of the functions that we should have in here. So I'm gonna jump out of this game now, because we've got actually assigned all of these controls to all of our N64 games. So let me jump out of Mario Kart 64. Let's go into another game that I'm familiar with so we can test out and make sure that these settings have actually saved to all of the games, not just the one that we went into here. So let's go into Diddy Kong Racing. So we're gonna let this game load up. We don't have to go back into RetroArch because all of the settings that we just programmed in there should carry over to all of the N64 games, not just the one that we went into to initially set this up. All right, so this was a longer lead in, but you can see moving my joystick, I am able to select different characters. So Let's select character here. Up and down's working so far with the joystick here to you know choose whether we go into adventure or tracks. Let's go into tracks here. We'll go with the first one. We'll do cars here. And we're gonna test this out, see if everything works. It seems to be so far just setting up the game but we'll see in a second whether we're able to actually control our character properly. So accelerator's working, left and right is working perfectly. Let's try our power-ups. Of course, I missed the first one there. Wait till we come up on another one, as long as they don't grab them before me. Yep, that one shot. A little hard to see there, but it did shoot when I hit that Z button, or Z trigger, I should say. Let's see if we can snag one of these and test it out once again. So we have the uh, little nitro boost there, so I'm gonna hit that Z trigger here, and there we go. 
works perfectly. So you can see all these settings have saved and have been applied to all of our N64 games, not just the one that we set this up on initially. All right guys, so I really couldn't ask for a better result here with my Raspberry Pi powered arcade. Everything worked beautifully on here. We went into Mario Kart 64. We changed these settings around to actually accommodate the onboard arcade controls. We put them into place, saved everything, tested it out in Mario Kart 64, jumped into another game within the same N64 collection, and we could see in Diddy Kong Racing that those changes apply to that game as well. So I'm confident that you'll be able to follow along with this video and everything is gonna work out perfectly for you guys. You're gonna be able to jump into your N64 games with your onboard controls and be able to play these with a little twist to them. It's a lot of fun. I've seen a lot of people struggle with setting this up, but I had a little time today, put this together, was able to figure out exactly what we needed to do to get these up and running with those arcade controls. So hope you guys have fun playing all these N64 games on your arcade cabinets. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments section below or reach out to me directly. Always happy to help you guys out with any questions you may have or any struggles you have along the way. So that's gonna do it for this video today. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, smash the like button for me. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a ton of different videos on here based around retro gaming, product reviews, gameplay demos, tutorials. We have the Forgotten Favorites YouTube series every Monday and Thursday night as well. So lots of great content to see on here. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And then of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropodguy.com. Thanks for watching today.